So hello, everybody. It is me, Demetra K, and I am sitting here with Donovan, a recovering Democrat, Sadiq, and it is the Demetra K podcast, where we promote Black love, knowledge, and understanding of all things that go on in the Black community to make us an even better people with an emphasis on even, because we are a great people, but we can always strive to do better. Also, like to say right off the top that we are not live. I'm going to repeat that. We are not live. This is a show that uh, Donovan and I do. Uh, so we can kind of uh, bounce ideas and arguments, debates or whatever um, off of each other. Uh, so I just want to say it again, it's not live. We will be live tomorrow, though, with Walter on Wealth Wednesdays with Walter. Um, uh, we have a pretty good topic. I think you will enjoy. Of course, we open up the link there and we invite everybody who wants to to click the link and participate. And so uh, with that being said, Donovan, what say you? I say welcome to the Demetri K podcast. You guys do me a favor, hit that like, share and subscribe button, even become a member, because as we get the information out, these are great uh, conversation pieces to start with. Uh, that's one of the main reasons we do the show so that we can have these conversations and we don't make the same mistakes as our elders and our uh, people behind us. Uh, also, uh, please, please, please. Uh, if you see the scroll thing there, we have Venmo, PayPal apps. And if you want to help support the channel back, there's many ways you can do you can do so. And we would and we greatly appreciate it. So let's get into this topic, the Chris Rock thing. I think it's very important. Uh, and let me preface the Chris Rock thing. As you guys may have heard, uh, Will Smith slapped the hell out of uh, Chris Rock on national TV. And this is supposed to be, from what I saw, the uh, Chris Rock's response because he never really responded to the incident that it actually happened. So Demetri will preface that one. So go ahead, Demetri. So today we're gonna to be talking about Chris Rock special. We also gonna be talking about uh, Donovan saw, he was in Target today, Target, and he saw something that kind of made it, uh, his eyebrows raise. It was a mannequin that was on the plus size and he's gonna go ahead and give us the narrative on that. And then uh, somebody sent me a scenario of a stepfather and a dilemma he finds himself in. And so I'm going to read it. I'm going to put it up on the screen so that everybody can see it. And then um, Donovan and I will give our opinion. We're not going to play tonight's conversation because I actually think we've kind of gone through most of them. So I need to um, order uh, a new deck of cards um, if we're going to continue to do that. And so, all right. The Chris Rock special called Selective Outrage. It debuted on uh, Saturday on Netflix. I guess it was a live event where he talked about a whole host of things. Now, I uh, took notes, right, as I was getting ready for, to do this. I listened, and I just want to kind of go over what I heard him talk about. So um, in the very beginning, he talked about uh, Michael Jackson, and then he compared it to R. Kelly in that if you play R. Kelly's music, uh, there's an outrage, or you consider woke, right, because you're brave. But if you play Michael Jackson's music, it's a party. And so he basically said they... Uh, were accused or uh, 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 they did the same thing as what he said. They did the same thing, right? And we know that Michael Jackson was exonerated, never found guilty of any of the things that he was accused of, right, twice. And there's been a lot of uh, recanting going on from some of these uh, alleged victims. Of course, we know that Oprah and um, the uh, people who was involved in the Leaving Neverland documentary uh, they try, tried to do a hit job on Michael Jackson. It was a failed effort. A lot of those things were debunked. So anyway, he uh, brought Michael Jackson into it, the selective outrage thing. And he, he said the N-word like 50, 11,000 times uh, throughout this documentary. And I guess we can also say that's not rare that comedians use the N-word. I just thought that he um, used it a lot. But I guess that's kind of uh, apropos to Chris Rock style to use the N-word a lot. I should say that it was a very mixed audience uh, there. And from what I understand, there's a lot of celebrities. Now, I didn't get a chance to actually watch it. I was listening to it because I was uh, doing other stuff. I was getting ready. Uh, then uh, he also brought up the pants Lululemon. Uh, I think it was Lul uh, Lulu something, whatever. Those very expensive yoga pants. And he says that they're considered woke yoga pants because they uh, do not uh, participate in racism. But he says... Uh, it is sort of like racism because the pants are expensive and nobody can afford them a hundred dollars. So he says, you're anti poor people. What he was saying. And he says, I don't think any of us will have a problem with the pants if they were $20. And if when you walked, they, uh, were whistling the N word. So they were saying N word, N word, N word, N word, N word. Right. Okay. So then I also, we said that 
he said he was very uh he did his homework on the venue uh that he was at and that was baltimore which is known to be jada pinkett's hometown so it sounds like he did it there on purpose he also brought about uh talked about people craving attention he talked about uh black china showing her behind uh, and then he brought up gail king in that reference uh as well not showing her behind if you will then he says that Serena, you know, is a great tennis player, uh, but she works out and things like that. So he's basically saying you don't have to do a lot to get attention nowadays. Show your behind, you know, and Serena Williams, she works out a lot. And I guess she gets attention. I don't know kind of where he was going with that. And he says that white men, uh, they play uh, the victim, if you will. But he says basically how are they the victims when they're running the country and basically the world, right? Then he also uh talked about how he could see why white people feel like they're victims of white men because you look on tv there's a lot of mixed race couples then of course he went on to talking about Meghan markle who was married to uh harry of windsor if you will the royal family and he says what she's experiencing is not racism it's just in-law as you know stuff um and she's uh basically had won the light skin lottery basically what she what is she complaining about type of thing then he brought Draymond Green and Steph uh, Curry into the argument because when she was saying, he was saying she was saying they wanted to know, the Royals want to know how brown will the baby be. And he says, well, black people wanted to know how brown will the baby be. Will he be Steph Curry brown or will he be uh, like Draymond Green, dark and black? He should wear uh, bells uh, so he doesn't sneak up on you type of stuff. Then he also later on in a special uh, called Draymond Green, black and greasy. I brought up the Kardashians, said that Kris Jenner just lets anyone in the family. And that anyone is, he didn't say their names, but he says a bipolar N-word, a crackhead N-word. Then he brought up Bruce Jenner, you know, how he has boobs and stuff like that. Uh, he said that, uh, let's see. Oh, the Kardashians love black people more than black people love black people. He also say OJ killed two white people. Rob Car and OJ again was exonerated from that. Rob Kardashian, uh, the father, Robert Kardashian is cursed uh, because he helped free uh, uh, OJ. They also say he's cursed because his daughter uh, got stuck with effing or uh, screwing rather crazy N words. Okay, so that was their curse. Uh, then he talked about his daughter Lola. Uh, then he talked about how her and her white friends, they got in trouble at school. I guess they was drinking or something. Then the white people had lawyers to keep their daughters in school. And then he said his daughter was more or less like, uh, what are you worried about, dad? It's okay, I'll be back in school in no time. So he called the school, told them to expel his daughter so she can learn the lesson. So they were all expelled. Now, whether you're serious or not, I don't know, but this is what he was saying. Um, yeah, so he got her kicked out of school. He was like, I want her to learn her lesson so she don't end up on OnlyFans. Uh, then he says that older men, when they get uh, they get younger women, he says, I'm not trying to be with a, uh, to F Anita Baker. I'm trying to F Doja Cat, right? So Anita Baker being old and Doja Cat being young. Uh, and that's pretty much all. Oh, yes, and of course, how can I leave that off? Of course, he got down to the uh, Jada Pinkett uh, situation. And he talked, obviously, like Donovan said uh, last year, almost a year ago to this day, I guess he got slapped the hell out by Will Smith for uh, talking about Jada, which is his wife. He called her and said something about G.I. Jane too. Now, and Chris, uh, not Chris, Will had enough, walked up on stage and uh, popped him, if you will. And so he called her the B word. He called Will Smith the B word a whole bunch of times. And you know, brought up the entanglement and he said that Jada started it and I finished it. And so as I was watching that, I wanted to know what exactly did Jada do to uh, Chris Rock? Like, what is it that she did? Now, he said she told me not to host the Oscars because in 2016, there was this thing that she started hashtag Oscar so white because uh, Will Smith was left out of any of the categories for uh, the movie Concussion. And so she did take to her Facebook and said the following. At the Oscars, now this is January 16, 2016. At the Oscars, people of color are always welcome to give out awards, even entertain, but we are rarely recognized for our artistic accomplishments. 
Should people of color refrain from participating altogether? People can only treat us in the way in which we are uh, allowed with much respect in the midst of deep disappointment, Jay. Now, I also did some more research and there's actually an article going around talking about how Chris Rock is actually obsessed with Jada and it seems like it's been that way for about 30 years. And so uh, someone else said that Jada never told Chris Rock to not host the Oscars in 2016. In fact, she said, I, I think uh, Chris would be a great Oscar host and it's perfect for the job. So I, everybody's trying to find this. Well, what did she start with Chris? Now, of course, we talked about this last year where a lot of people says, oh, well, Will Smith only went up there and I uh, did what he did to Chris because Jada gave him the look. But again, what did Jada Smith do to Chris Rock, right? So she's been villainized. Of course, you know, he brought up the whole entanglement situation with um, Jada and August of Selena, which was Jade and her son's friend. I guess he stayed in the house and they had an entanglement, as she called it. Of course, we saw the infamous interview with Will Smith and her. And, you know, he basically said that he and Chris, uh, Jada hurt Will worse than I did with interviewing him about how did it make you feel that I, you know, sucked another man's D is what he said. And so the question I have is what did Jada actually do to Chris? Now, if you've seen the special, you will see if I saw, it was very venomous and I did not laugh one time. Now, one time did I laugh as I watched slash listen to, uh, this uh, special, and I'm just give you my opinion right off the rip. I think it was a, a high tech minstrel show. That's what I saw. And then at the end, he says, uh, people basically want to know why didn't you hit him back? And of course, he said Will Smith is a lot bigger than him and you know, better shape and all of that. But then he said that my parents taught me not to fight in front of white people. But yet, you sat there for an hour and nine minutes and you said inward 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 you insulted kanye draymond green oj simpson uh lamar odom black china anita baker you know and will smith and jada smith but your parents told you not to fight in front of white people but they ever tell you not to use the n-word and speaking of which you guys know a few years back that he was uh sitting down with uh, Jerry Seinfeld, who did not engage in the N word fest, along with uh, uh, what's it, Ricky Gervais and uh, C, uh, CK Lewis or whatever his name is, uh, and I forget whoever else was there. And they he freely used the N word and allowed them to use the N word in his presence. And so, I want to know what did Jada actually do to Chris for him to continuously ride down on her? Very interesting there. I did not see the special. I don't uh, pay for specials. I don't do any of that stuff because like you said, um, a lot of comedians nowadays um, is the, and this is just in my experience and comedians that I've seen, it's a lot of vulgarity, unnecessary vulgarity, a lot of sexual innuendos and, you know, a lot of stuff that's really not to me that funny because it's, really not that funny. I mean, if that's if that's your go-to is to uh, talk about how many bodies you've slept with and, you know, this, that, you don't really have much of a, a repertoire. There's so much going on in the world that you could talk about. And that's one thing I liked about Richard Pryor because he never really uh, talked about, I mean, he had some little things in there, but it wasn't really a sexual thing. It was always either politically motivated or things that happen in everyday circumstance. If you can take an everyday circumstance and make it funny, you're very talented. Eddie Murphy was very good at that. Martin Lawrence was very good at that as well. So uh, I didn't really watch it, but I did see Chris Rock when I was stationed in Alaska and never knew that many black people were up in Alaska until he came there <laughs> and we were at the venue. I mean, there's nothing but black people in there. And he was very funny back in that day. My, my question is this, in today's market, in today's society, in this woke environment that we are in, and this is something that a lot of these comedians got to think about because before people used to take a joke as a joke. Could he be sued for some of the things that he says 
in his comedy skit. Because I know some uh, comedians have been threatened to be sued or some of them have been sued in regards to some of the things that they are saying. And then as we know in the black community, negativity is a profit margin within the black community. So as long as we're gonna laugh and uh, you know, talk about each other and, uh, and ac accentuate the stereotypes of black people within our own community, it's okay, but let another person do it. Oh, how dare they? Oh, you know, we, we shouldn't be doing that. Oh, he hate his mama. Oh, she, ain't, she was raised without her daddy. You know, it, it's, it, it's, it's like a, a catch 22. You know, it, it's very, very, uh, it, just do, it just doesn't make sense how you can use it in this aspect, but somebody else uses it and it's wrong. People say that uh, Eminem is the, the, the greatest hip hop artist rapper there ever was. Here's a white guy that's coming into our culture and vulture culturing it and, and they're giving him this crown and you had so many that, that were before them, but it's okay when he uses it because he's talking in a genre that we uh, pretty much dominate. Um, but, you know, he's making money off of this. So it all, it, everything always comes down at, at the end of the day to money. And I've never, I, I haven't seen the, this particular show, but I will say this. You have a lot of people out here who will sell their souls for the mighty dollar. And I don't think Chris Rock or anybody else, I'm not defending him. I'm just saying, I don't think, you know, he's doing anything different than securing the bag for himself to go on and, and do that. And, you know, and it's sad because, you know, we are in a society now where nothing matters other than the mighty dollar. So you asked if he could be sued. I don't think he could be sued because it's parody, you know, and he could say that it's parody. It's, I'm joking. I'm a comedian. Um, and I don't think that the Smiths would sue him. It doesn't, they haven't responded to that. I know of ever responded to it at all. Of course, there's a lot of banter back and forth online. Oh, he slapped back. He got the last laugh and you know, all that. And I guess it's really in the eye of the beholder. I, like I said, I didn't think any of it was funny. I thought that he came off as angry, um, very hateful. And um, I firmly believe that he doesn't like black women too much. I just don't get that at all. Um, I don't know what happened to uh, him. Is he married to a black woman? I'm just, I'm just asking. He was. He was okay. married to a white, black woman. I know he was with a white woman. I don't know if they're still together. You know, and last time I, I saw he was with a very white woman. Um, but and speaking of white women, I didn't hear him tear down white women at all. I didn't hear him go after no white woman. Of course not. If you mess with Zaddy's woman, his career is over. But I'm saying I didn't hear him mention a white woman's by name or, you know, any of that other stuff. Now, going back to 2016 during the Oscar so white controversy. Uh, and again, if you guys didn't get that uh, reference, uh, Oscar back in 2016, I guess they didn't nominate anybody black or something like that. So uh, he hosted the Oscars in 2016. And he says, Jada got mad, says she's not coming. Jada boycotting the Oscars is like me boycotting Rihanna's, Rihanna's panties. I wasn't invited. And so it's like you, you, you jabbed at Jada, um, Jada Smith, and then you brought up Rihanna's panties, another black woman. So it's like, what, what, what's wrong with you, man? So you, you insulted Jada. And then you, you know, said something very creepy and nasty about Rihanna who had nothing to do with it. And so, you know, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out what did Jada do to Chris to where he just hones in on her. Now, of course, let's go back to 2016 where he got the taste slapped out of his mouth. There was a lot of people who were dividing on it saying, you know what? Big ups to Will Smith for uh, looking out for his woman protecting his woman's name and, you know, or his honor. Then there's some people's like, oh, well, you know, he's still tender about the interview and her sleeping with August or Selena, this, that, and the other. But it's like, if you think about the totality of it all, Jada did not tell him to go and slap Chris Rock. Now, some people said, oh, well, the way she looked, she did roll her eyes and I would have rolled my eyes too. It's like, why are you talking about me? You went to all these other white women in the audience and you didn't insult the way they looked. I'm sitting up here bald headed because I got alopecia and you think it's funny to talk about my bald head. And so there was a lot of people and I would say men too. It wasn't just women. 
a lot of men that say, yeah, Chris Rock got what he got. He's been, you know, raccooning for a very long time now. And you you firing on his sister, which ain't firing on these white women. So they thought he got what he deserved. But again, like I said, some people's like, well, it went too far. It was violence. It was embarrassing. The Oscars, the most uh, pristine and high esteem place you can be is the Oscars in front of all these white people. He slaps you know chris and then he says keep my wife's name out your mouth and all that other stuff but i know as uh, being a black woman uh, raised by black parents there is this saying in our community that says you're getting tapped up where you act up you know what i mean you <laughs> where you uh, created the offense is where you're gonna get dealt with so it's like honestly I wouldn't be surprised if Will Smith sees him somewhere in public and bomb rushes him again. I would not be surprised. Because one thing, you're not going to keep calling my woman the B word because you still, you know, salty about what happened. And, you know, I'm not saying Chris, Will Smith was, you know, correct in choosing violence, but the man said he was sorry a hundred times, tried to reach out to him, and here you are still talking about his wife. So. Well, as they say, controversy creates money. I mean, that's what it's about. I mean, when Ice Cube left NWA, look how many record sales went went down. I mean, this is just what goes on in the entertainment industry. So I, I wouldn't be surprised that it, as if this is, it's not like planned in the aspect, but everybody knows, that, you know, you got team Will, you got team this, you got, you know what I mean? Everybody wants to take a side and they love, everybody loves drama in some, some form. And in some form, in some way, you're going to make money off of it. I don't know if his stand up was a sellout, but it was a Netflix uh, special. So I'm sure he got the bag from that. The promoters got paid for it. I don't know if he's going to continue to do other shows. So he's making some money off of it, staying relevant in the aspect that it is today. Because, you know, let, let, let's be real. Just like singers well, actors kind of stay relevant because it's, it's a different type of genre. But you don't see the four tops making you know, stellar music anymore. You know, there, there's a, a window and then and then they kind of go on the casino circuit and they kind of do the nostalgia thing. So if, it's the same thing for, I, I would say for uh, comedians, you, you're not going to see a Richard Pryor at 80 years old talking about, uh, you know, craziness of, you know, of a sexual nature or something like that. Now he could talk about mud bone and, you know, the old way of doing things. He could probably make a great career on everyday stuff. But most of your comedians nowadays, since that's all they've got is sexual innuendo and damn shit, but, you know, blah, 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 they're going to be done. So for Chris Rock, he's been around for since since the 90s. I mean, since the late 80s, really. I'm going to get you suck. It was one of his first movies. Um, it, it's a way to stay relevant and also to get the bag, because let's face it, other than hosting duties, a few movies here and there, it isn't like he's a top tier type star so this is a i think a great way for him to uh, stay relevant and make some money you know in the modern time because let's face it you got some young up and coming entertainers that are out there every day and this is what i tell uh people our age you had your day damn it you had your day let these younger people come in and do what they need to do you know when you're an older person and you're still trying to uh drop it like it's hot at 47 to 53 years old it just doesn't look good so i think this is a way for him to make money stay relevant and secure the bag I, you know i really don't think he gives a damn uh, of the embarrassment of getting slapped up by will he's going to uh, compete on it make some money off of it and just move forward with it as, as, as far as he can take it yeah so i think his first movie was beverly hills cop i think they said it was one of his first roles or something like that uh, he's worth about $60 million from what I just saw in here. Will Smith is worth about $350 million. And throughout the special, he referred to kind of loosely uh, Will Smith as a rapper. And it's like, I think Will Smith is probably a little bit more than a rapper, but I guess that was his way of trying to uh, undress him and deduce him down to just a rapper. But it's like, ah, oh, that man got about almost $300 million more million than you. Yeah. Well, you know, for me, I, I don't really like Will Smith as an actor because I knew him as a rapper. And I just, I, you know, I'm not saying that he isn't a skilled because obviously he won the best actor thing. I'm not saying he can't be skilled, but I don't really care for Will Smith movies because I see him as a rapper. So that's just me. So, yeah, I, I don't mind uh, Will Smith as a, uh, an actor. I actually see him more of an actor than I do a rapper. 
Uh, I don't know, maybe because that's just what he does most of now is, uh, you know, he's got his own uh, uh, studio and production company. And so, you know, he's more than a rapper. I think, you know, a lot of times for, uh, people, Will Smith, they see him as this golden guy, if you will. He's all around good looking, tall, handsome, you know, and just kind of has a Midas touch type of thing. And then when he became human, that day on the Oscars and he did what he did. I think people like, oh my God. And that's kind of how uh, one of my favorite movies is The Apostle with Robert Duvall, where he was a, you know, a, pa a pastor, an apostle, and he had some misgivings and I won't give the movie away, he had some misgivings and a lot of people were taken aback. And I call it one of my favorite movies because it really just illustrated that pastors are humans too. And if not them, that gives us the perception of a deity, if you will. It's us get, uh, uh, holding them as deities in our life. And so I kind of see the same thing with Will Smith and that he had all these things going on for him. And when he became human, it's like we clutched our pearls. It's like, oh my God, he's human. It's like, well, you know, I think that's uh, the, the, the nature of a man. Now, some men would not result to violence as he did. But I think the nature of a man is to protect the woman he loves. And you have a man up there who is riding down on your woman with you sitting there. And yeah, you look over and you see your wife is not pleased with that. I think, and some people are going to get mad, but I, I would just think he felt like this is my duty to protect my wife and let this, you know, dude know you out here in front of all these people disrespecting my woman. Well, whatever come with that, then so be it. So we're not used to seeing that anymore as a society. We're used to seeing people just kind of, ah. Uh, but I guarantee you one thing, if more people knew that they had the possibility of getting the taste slapped up out their mouth before they say and do certain things, they probably would think twice. But we live in a society where people are just reckless with their mouth more importantly, in the day of the internet, they reckless with their thumbs. They type in and saying any kind of thing without retribution. And Chris Rock thought that because he was on that stage and, you know, maybe we're in front of the world and TV that I could say whatever I want to say about this sister. But her husband said, hold my beer. So I'm not, I, I'll, I'll tell y'all, y'all can be mad at me all you want. I'll never be mad at that. Never. Well, as a man, I'm going to tell you this, especially when it comes to money, there's a time and a place for everything. And I personally believed, you know, he could have handled that off of the stage and done the same exact thing, done the same exact thing, but not on camera. You know what I mean? Because it's it, like I said, if, if, if it became a criminal case, you got all this on camera, it's kind of hard to refute what's on camera. Whereas if you did it behind stage, Hopefully nobody will film it and it's your word against his word and so on, so on, so forth. That's all I'm saying is it's not what you do. It's just how you do it. So as a man, when it comes to the the coin and the and the place and the venue of doing it, I think he could have addressed that by backstage or at another time or whatever. So I don't know. And, you know, I got a daddy. I got a daddy. And if I was one, any one of his daughters or his woman and that was getting disrespected, I know for a fact my daddy probably would have did the same thing. He wouldn't have been thinking about how much money is going to cost me, how much time I'm going to do. I tell you all the time, there's a lot of stuff I could not tell my daddy of the things that I've been through in relationships because I knew that somebody was going to hell and somebody was going to jail. So that's I couldn't tell my daddy everything. You know what I mean? And so I think and I can't tell a man how to act, but I'm telling you from the men that I know in my life, whether it's my brother's or my father's, because I have two of them, I, I, I could see them doing the same thing. They ain't cause like, well, okay, it's going to cost me some money. Da, da, nah, because I got to lay down with her. I'm telling that that was, you know, my uh, their woman, you know, or I got to look in my daughter's eyes and know that I sat there as another grown ass man, uh, uh, humiliated her and I didn't do anything, right? So I can't tell other men what they would do, but I just know the men in my life, wouldn't I be going for that? I'm telling you right now, my daughter's father is the same way. If his daughter or his woman was having that done, trust me, I, I, I've seen my daughter's father get put in handcuffs over his child. I've seen it. And he wasn't thinking, okay, well, you don't do that. Nah, I need to see about my baby. So I'm just telling y'all. 
I said, uh, everybody has their way of doing things. So, uh, you know, it's interesting. It's very, very interesting. And then, you know, depending on how you handle it, there's consequences for everything you do in this world. So let's just remember that there's consequences. Absolutely. But some people like, you know what, I'll take it on the chin, whatever it is. Because there's a couple, I've never, um, I don't have any criminal record at all, but there's a few things that I know for a fact that I would catch a case over. I ain't going to tell y'all what they are, but there's a few things, uh, just a few, count them on one hand. That I would gladly catch a charge for. <laughs> you know what I mean? But anyway, Donovan, you ready? I am ready. So this is my part of the thing. Yes, okay. I'm, let just me... gonna, I'm just going to put the picture up and I'm going yes. to listen as I drink my water. As you guys see, uh, uh, yes, listen saying, and learn. Right. Liquid really? death. Is that what you're drinking? Liquid, liquid death? Yeah, you know, I know people got their opinions about it being, it's just water, and the premise of it is to quench your thirst. It's nothing right. satanic or esoteric. Sure. It's it's good sparkling water. And and who who's the manufacturer? Um, Satan. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> it's manufactured by. Uh, let's see here. It says liquid death. Okay. So. Okay. Anyway, let me put this picture up here so that Don. Sure, let's get into this. This is going to be. Um, I hope a lot of people will get what I'm saying and not take it out of context because a lot of people do that. Okay, what we're looking at here, the other day I was walking through Target, Target as the regular people of us call it. And I saw this mannequin there and I was kind of perplexed at it because I was like, wait a minute, what the hell is that? Yes, it's a shapely mannequin. Yes, it is a nice, dress on the mannequin. I, I don't have a problem with the dress. The dress is very nice. The shoes, I might want to check out the shoes a little bit different. But anyway, but I looked at this and in the back of my mind, I was saying, what is it that they are trying to portray in our minds? Because propaganda, as we've been talking about on my show and on this show every now and then when I'm on here, is how strong propaganda is in the media, social media, and stuff like this. What, is, what are we trying to say? Because if you look at the mannequins behind this young lady, they're pretty common standard mannequins. Now, people will say, well, what is standard, whatever. Believe it or not, everything in the world has a standard, okay? If you, if you wanna believe it or not, you can stay in your own bubble and make your own standards, that's fine, but that doesn't mean it's the real world standards. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, if I was a young girl and this, model that I'm looking at here, this mannequin I'm looking at here, I would say would be a mature woman type model. It could be a teenager, depending on how you interpret it, but I interpret it as a mature young lady. Now, the propaganda and the narrative, this is not about attacking women, okay? What, what I'm thinking about is this pro trying to promote an unhealthy lifestyle. Are they trying to tell me that being plus size and what I would say overweight is okay? This is why men have a problem with participation trophies in sports. Not everybody could be a winner. There has to be a winner or loser. Now, if, if they're promoting it's okay to be obese or overweight, as we know as older people, you're going to put on more weight. And, and you, if you live a healthy, un, unhealthy lifestyle, as you get older, it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Now, I rarely have worked out in my adult life. I've been skinny all of my life. Now, for the last two and a half, three years, I've worked out because it's a life and death situation for me. You know, I got to eat healthier. I've got to work out to be healthy or whatever. And I'm saying to myself, if I had a young teenage girl, a uh, daughter, and we know girls already go through a lot of uh, self-esteem issues as it is, the pressure of just being a female, uh, especially our black uh, women, uh, hair issues, size issues, you know, so, I mean, there's a plethora of things that our, our, our ladies go through just to add this this on there, right? It, to find husbands, to find the right guy, whatever. There's so many things that you're doing to, to push. And I, I'm just wondering, 
It's nothing, again, it's nothing against women in particular. What is the narrative that they're trying to say in this picture in regards to uh, women? Are they saying that an overweight, o- obese woman is okay? Because that's the wrong narrative, in my opinion. That's the wrong narrative. Because if they're pushing that, if they're saying that it's okay not to work out, not to be healthy, not to be the best you, what are the outcomes as, a, let's say this this model here is 22 years old. She, she, she buys that narrative. Now she's 30. Now she's a lot bigger, a lot heavier, because as you get older, you're going to put on weight. She still probably can't find a man. The self-esteem issues that are going to go on to it. What about heart attacks? Look at all these young people that are dropping dead for whatever reasons. You want to be the best you. So this narrative that I'm putting out there is what are they trying to tell us in regards? Are they trying to also tell us, hey, be unhealthy so that you can die earlier? It's bad enough. They put guns in the community. They put uh, drugs in the community. They put alcohol in the community. They're doing all of this stuff subliminally. So now what is this now? What is this? And that's my question. And that's what I put out there. If you go to my uh, Facebook page, that's what I allude to. It has nothing to do with women in particular. It has to do with the narrative of an unhealthy lifestyle. Is that what they're trying to promote? All right. Off the rip. I just want to make sure I see what I see. I see a mannequin, as you say, at Target. And I've seen plus size uh, mannequins before. I see a mannequin modeling a dress and some shoes, which I, I think is kind of cute. Uh, that's what I see. Now, I'm going to take the picture down. Okay. Let me uh, take the picture down. Now, you said a whole lot, brother, and you let off with saying, you know, it's propaganda, which propaganda is misleading info, it's biased information that's usually publicized, right? So Hitler was want known to es- espouse a lot of propaganda, okay? Now, you also said, uh, are they promoting an unhealthy lifestyle? And specifically, uh, what are children to get from that young girls, I guess? Um, You also say everybody cannot be a winner. Uh, Then you went on to say some self-esteem could promote. But you said women have self-esteem issues is what you're saying. Um, well, men, men too, men that are obese, yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just repeating. I wrote. Yeah, I, I know. I'm just. I'm just. I'm okay, putting on the men too. Men let too. Let me talk, brother. Let me talk. Okay. So you said women have self esteem issues. Then you also uh, kind of finished it off with what's the narrative? Is it okay to not work out? Then you, you brought up heart attacks and things like that. So per Google, the average size of the woman in the United States is 170 pounds, and they said a size 14 is considered average now. So I guess that kind of jives. I'm just telling you what it said. Now, I have a few questions for you. What is a winning size? Because you said everyone cannot be a winner. So what is a winning size? Wait, you mean a winning size or what is a winner? Or what is a one? What? Because I thought you may be kind of correlating it to that of this mannequin. That was a big. No, no, no. What, What I'm saying is like in sports, when you have children in sports, a lot of fathers get outraged because all the kids get participation trophies. Not okay, everybody right. can be a winner. Yeah, so I guess I'm trying to figure out how did you co, co uh, how did you co-mingle not being, everybody can not be a winner to the plus size mannequin and what it's trying well, to Well, what I'm saying is not everybody's plus size. Not everybody is going to be skinny. We all, we already know that. Okay, I, so I still don't connect, but I just take it at your word. Now, uh, you also brought up women having self-esteem issues and I'm just going to go out there on a limb and say a lot of women have self-esteem issues. Excuse me if I'm freezing up, y'all, but y'all can hear me. I will go out on a limb and say women have self-esteem issues due to the nonsense that men espouse. Okay? Because we know that there's a lot of women who say, well, I'll take little Kim, for example. People put the horse bridle in her mouth and they ride her to death in how she looks. And she was very clear about why she did what she did. She says, I did what I did because for one, I had a father who was very mean to me and talked about how I looked. And then she says that I usually dated men who cheated on me for more European looking woman. And she says out of her own mouth, I have body dysmorphia and I know that I'm not well. Y'all can find the interview. She said that. So she attributed that her low self-esteem to the things that men said. Now, ultimately, you're, you're responsible for how you feel, but 
the way uh, women are judged in society that has a lot to do with the self-esteem of a woman. I'll give you a perfect example of Jamie Lee Curtis. Have you seen Jamie Lee Curtis in the last 15 years? She said in a magazine, I refuse to let them dye my hair, put a bunch of makeup on me, do not airbrush me, anything like that. She says, because I will not be one of the women that give a false idea to women out there that I'm perfect, I'm airbrushed, I don't have any wrinkles or gray hair. She says, I do not want to mislead women anymore. And if you look at her now, she has gray hair and, you know, she's naturally herself. And so I personally, as I saw that mannequin, I didn't see anything being promoted as far as, um, oh, they're promoting this narrative to women. It's okay not to work out. Oh, it's okay to be a bigger girl. I just saw a mannequin that was promoting a dress and shoes perhaps for bigger women. Now, if you look at that mannequin, one, I would say, well, is she obese or is she a big girl? Is she a curvier girl? Because I think too, when we go along with that narrative, because you mentioned the other mannequins being skinny or slim, whatever the case is, we know that every woman is not a size zero or whatever. Some women, as it says here, the average woman in America is a size 14, which is about 170 pounds, give or take. So, I mean, it's just like, I didn't see that. And I didn't, I, when I saw the mannequin, I didn't see, well, it's saying don't work out. It's okay to be heavy. Now, go ahead. I'll let you respond. Right. Now, okay. Uh, I, I agree with you. My thing about the other mannequins was in that whole store, I didn't see one male mannequin that was, that was uh, big or overweight. What I'm saying is from what I saw in that store, the only mannequin that was overweight were the ones in the female section, which to me sends a message. So they do have a big boy's uh, size mm -hmm. of, of clothes. Okay, first of all, and I want to just put on and just put this out here, men. And I'm since you're the man on here. Excuse me, my earring maybe hit my mic. It's since you're the man on here and you're bringing up how women look and how big they are, y'all the one that's dropping like flies. At very young ages, look at all these rappers since they're in the spotlight who were dying in their young 50s and in their 40s. And this is where I kind of get huffy puffy is because instead of y'all focusing on y'all gender, and I'm going to go ahead and take it a step further, black men dying um, at their 40s and their 50s, y'all worried about the size of the ass on a mannequin. So my thing is, I feel, this is my opinion, that y'all are misguided. And now, this to me goes in the same vein of y'all need to hold women accountable. Nah, tell your homeboys to put on your tennis shoes and go get your ass out on the track and go run and push away from the fried chicken and all that before you focus on telling the women what size clothes is acceptable in your eyes because yeah you might not want a, a fluffy woman but listen let me tell you something a fluffy woman ain't got no problem getting no dang lane she ain't got no problem getting the man y'all like to talk about lizzo all the time lizzo got a man and she got a man that got something going on and so this narrative of don't no man really want no big woman who well all right. You said a lot there. Now, unfortunately, I premised this as, is this a propaganda negative of an unhealthy lifestyle? Unfortunately, the model was a female models thing. So it's not about men or women. And I said that in the beginning. It's not about, it's, it's are they promoting unhealthy lifestyles? Immediately, you have turned it into a woman, man thing. Not once did I say that. Not once did I say anything about that. I said, is the system that we have promoting an unhealthy lifestyle, like our, I preface guns in the community, I preface drugs that they put in the community, all the stuff that they do. So now are they putting out a, a agenda that being overweight or whatever it is, and, and I, when I said overweight, I didn't say female, I said overweight period, overweight period. Is this an agenda so that we kill ourselves? And I prefaced also, People, young people that are dying and just dropping dead and whatever. And most, like you said, I agree. A lot of men are just dropping dead in their 40s. 
has nothing to do with male or female. It's about a narrative of living an unhealthy lifestyle. So now we are going to off ourselves, be it your male, female, or LGBTQ, NMOP. Is that what they're trying to do? First of all, I want to say how disingenuous you are, my brother, because you like to change the argument in the middle of the stream. Now, you said that I only saw big, big, uh, what, let, don't cut me on, let me finish. I only saw big women my, mannequins. You didn't say you saw big, uh, you, in fact, I think you went on to say you didn't see big men mannequins so you made this about women and then when i what well, let me finish yes you did listen brother this is memorex we can rewind this okay and then when i brought up men dying uh younger and younger and younger do y'all know that black men and people but black men specifically are uh now their lifespan is becoming that of what slaves used to be the lifespan of a slave, that's what you guys as black men are looking at. But y'all focused on a fat mannequin or a plump mannequin. The other thing, too, is before I get to your question, of are they promoting a healthy, uh, unhealthy lifestyle? Do, can, do bigger people deserve to buy clothes? Do they deserve representation? Should I? Is it Because I'm not skinny, okay? I, so when I walk into a store, do I not deserve to find clothes that fit my fat ass? And I say fat ass, I mean fat ass. Okay, do I not deserve to find clothes that fit me? I mean, I'm just saying as far as promoting a healthy lifestyle, a healthy lifestyle, how, where did we get that from? That this looking at a mannequin that Target or any other store is promoting an unhealthy lifestyle. Because the other thing too is we assume because people don't look like you, Donovan, that's very slender, that they are unhealthy. But there are a lot of people with meat on their bones more so than the average or well, average free and four tight size 14 women. But there's people with more meat on their bones than most people. They are still healthy. That is a fact. Again, I walked through Target and the only mannequin I saw that was overweight was the one that is put out there. So by definition, like you said, I agree. There are heavy men out there, whatever. Where are the other mannequins? Why aren't there heavy mannequin in the men's section? Why aren't there heavy man mannequins in the whatever section? Whatever. What I'm saying is, and again, are they putting out a narrative that it is okay to be overweight and it seems like they're targeting uh, the women's section? And let's just face it, in the words of, uh, and it's been statistically proven, in the black community, uh, black women, like you said, 170 pounds are overweight more so from the size and weight uh, category than their male counterparts. That's just a fact. What I'm saying is that's just one thing that I saw. I'm not speaking for the whole community or whatever. I'm saying I look at things like that and I say, what is it that they're trying to promote here? Because from what you're saying is if everybody's doing that, where are the other overweight mannequins, especially in the man section? You didn't see that. And that's what I'm saying. It makes me wonder, what are they trying to put out there? Hold my beer, hold my, hold my beer. I got, I got something for you. Cause what I like to do is I like to, you know, I like to, you know, give the conversation a little bit of evenness, if you will. You challenged and said, where are the big male mannequins? Well, I'm going to actually put one on a screen as soon as my uh, computer, because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing it from my phone to my computer, how Apple products work. Here we go. Let's see if I can go ahead and put that up for y'all really quick. Give me one sequito. I know that ain't Spanish, but it is today. As soon as it, uh, as soon as it finishes uploading, I will be more than happy to put that on there. But I mean... Yes. The Target that I was at, that was the only mannequin that was out there. Because I know there are, are, are heavy mannequins for men. But at this Target, they only had one. Why? See, maybe at that Target, but again, you're moving the needle, brother. Because, wait, let me, Donovan, one thing you got to get comfortable at is allowing me to, to disagree without you. Ah, 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 ah. No. Let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say my wait, wait, wait. No, no, when I'm disagreeing and I'm not on the mic. You can continue to talk. I'm just moving my head. That's all. That, that usually comes with a, well, now, you know what I'm saying? But let me say this. Okay. You can, let me see. This taking a while to upload. I think 
that you have moved the needle because while you did not say you, you said that you did not see one at target it almost went in the vein that they this there i don't they don't exist you didn't say that but it was kind of the illusion of that they the male manic uh, heavy mannequins don't exist soon as this uploads i will show you that they do otherwise y'all could take my word or you can go and uh google it if you will i don't want to waste any time doing that but y'all could google and find uh male uh plus size mannequins but i just tend to think that seeing a big woman mannequin in target like i, I wonder for anybody man or woman that go in there and see that how do you draw the conclusion that there's just propaganda there in that uh oh they're promoting an unhealthy lifestyle or you know they're trying to uh assert that people it's okay to be unhealthy but the question i have is who is to say who are you or anybody to say that somebody uh should exercise or should not be unhealthy if it's not your body exactly you know who i am i am donovan sadiq and i have an opinion and i matter so so what when i say something you can take it for a grain of salt like i said like we're having this this conversation right now all i'm saying is 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 that possible that this is another narrative that they're promoting so that we can go out there and kill ourselves as you know black people we are on when it's really bad for us we're at the top of the scale when it's good for us we're at the bottom of the scale that's the only question i'm asking because as we know in our community, we don't take action on stuff until it's too late. So unlike our predecessors, we're not gonna be in this generation of, well, don't say nothing, baby, when like that. I'm just putting it out there. Is this something that, I'm just questioning the, the fact of, is this something that they're doing to say, hey, it's okay to be 400 and something pounds at 5'2", so that you can kill yourself, you know what I mean? And all these other things that that pre that premate our community. I'm just asking a question. That's all I'm doing. You're at you, but you're asking a question. And I'm, you know, I'm just trying to figure out just, I don't know, maybe you can help me. How did you come to that conclusion by looking at a mannequin? Did Target say we are putting this uh, plus size mannequin out here to let you guys know it's okay to be unhealthy? And again, how do you know if that was a real woman that she is unhealthy? Have you seen her medical records, her statistics, or any of that kind of stuff? Or are we looking and saying, well, she's not a size two, three, four, five, six. So therefore, she seems to be unhealthy. How do we know that that size woman would be considered unhealthy? And the other question is, are there not slender people who are unhealthy? Absolutely. I agree with you. There are slender people that are unhealthy. I, I happen to be one of them. However, when you look in the military, do you ever have you ever seen a woman that size according to that mannequin in, in the military? Yes, there are some. There are some. In the Navy, there's a lot of them in, in the Navy. <laughs> what you're doing. But there is a height and weight scale. If you like the height or weight scale, or if you accept it or not, there is. Um, again, my uh, I'm 5'10. My uh, max ideal weight is 178. I'm at 167 right now. My minimum is one, I think, 14. So there are standards that are out there now. You know, everybody's got their different scales or whatever. That's fine. Remember, I come from a military background. So do I see people uh, like that on a, on a daily basis? Not in the not within the military community. Spouses and stuff. Yes. Uh, my wife was uh, a, a plus size woman. My ex-wife was a plus size woman. Does it mean she was healthy? Not necessarily, but that's my opinion. All I'm saying is with the within the black community, black uh, people in general, we are, especially our women, are 70% or something. I forgot what the statistic is, but if I need the statistic, I'll throw it out there. But I believe a majority of our women are either obese or overweight. So what I'm saying is in the, di the diaspora of the mind, if they are promoting that it is okay to have this extra weight on your body, and as we know, as we age, we get older, we put more weight on, is this something that we could really uh, deal with in regards, like you said, people are dropping dead in their 40s now.
I, you said a, you said a, a lot there, uh, brother. But you didn't go into a Target on a military base, did you? No, but I've been around Targets while I was in the military. Yeah, and, at, I, I, and again, and, and in this Target, there was no other uh, model that was up there that was like this one. Can I ask you a personal question? What what, what what's your deal with big women and this model? I'm, I'm just asking. Like, what, what, what do you what, mean? I don't have a, big, a, a deal with big women. I, like I said, my ex-wife was a, a plus-size woman, so there's no big deal. My, my question is, what is it? Promoting, it? Yes, are they promoting an unhealthy lifestyle? I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what anybody says. You cannot have extra weight on you as the years go by and still say say that you're going to be healthy. That's that that's not true. That's just not true. I mean, again, are they promoting an unhealthy lifestyle? I would say no, because who's to say that woman, if that was a real woman, is unhealthy, and that also, on the flip side, says that if you if the, those models that you pointed out behind that model, I'll put that up again. Those models behind that are on the slender side, I mean, is to say that they're considered healthy and the big one is not considered healthy i wouldn't say that they're promoting an unhealthy lifestyle because the plus size woman that's there you know on the front here i mean nothing about her i wouldn't look at a woman that size and say wow she's unhealthy man she looks like she's gonna die tomorrow of a heart attack i wouldn't look at her and say that so that's why i kind of i'm trying to figure out how would you, how did that question pop into your mind as you're, you know, going through Target? How did, how did that hit you opposed to saying, oh, well, that's an interesting dress. Oh, those are nice shoes or whatever. How, how did that come into your mind that is Target promoting an unhealthy lifestyle when you can, in fact, go into the men's section and see big clothes? And also, there is a store called Big and Tall for men now are they promoting an unhealthy lifestyle or are they catering to a market that exists whether they are unhealthy or not because big people need clothes too it, it isn't the issue of big people needing clothes and again men are bigger than women by nature so again i agree with you there's double x triple x xl for men we get that but men are bigger than women by our species. So that's not even an issue here. How I came to the thing is that is your walk. I walked in and I'm thinking, okay, well, that's interesting. Yeah. The dress is beautiful. The dress is beautiful, but I'm starting to see where everybody's saying that this size is okay for this person. I said, well, no, that's not, that's not anatomically correct. Even when I talked to my doctor and I was asking questions with my doctor, they said, no, if you got this, if you're if the ideal, the ideal size is this, 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 uh, Flying airplanes. Notice the, the airplanes are getting, uh, the seats are getting smaller. But what it is, is Americans have gotten bigger. People have gotten bigger in, in general in their size. Just because they, they've gotten bigger does not necessarily mean that's the norm. Just people have gotten bigger. Now, it's the norm by the standard. Like I said, 170 pounds. The average woman in the, in the United States is how tall, Demetria, if you know? It says about 5'4". Five, 5'4". Four. Five, four. Five four at 170 pounds puts you overweight. Okay, let me let me, let me go on to give you some statistics since you right. you know brought black women into the issue. Four out of five black women are considered obese. However, the BMI chart is considered racist because a black woman at 170 pounds looks a lot different than most of the time than a white woman at 170 pounds. You know where the uh, BMI chart says I should be uh, for being five four, five three, five four, give or take, depending on what day it is says I should be 115 pounds, 125, 115 pounds. You know what I would look like at 125 pounds? At my smallest, I was 143 pounds and I looked like a crackhead, okay? So we know that, and even my doctors, I've had two of my doctors tell me, Oh, there's nothing wrong. She maybe lose a little couple pounds, but you know what they said? Ain't nothing wrong with a curvy girl. I think you're trying to get at me. That's a different story. But he says, ain't nothing wrong with a curvy girl. Ain't nothing wrong with you. He says, yeah, 
you know, the charts say you should be this, but no, you just, you know, as long as your vitals are healthy, and I'm gonna tell you, I can outrun, I can outcycle, I can out treadmill, I can outdo a lot of stuff uh, than the average woman my age and some of the average men my age, okay? And I'm not no twig. So when we talk about black women being four out of five obese, per whose standard? Well, number one, I'm going to disagree with you. With all that wagon that you're dragging, no, you're not going to you're not going to beat anybody. Okay, so so with that, see, but 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 here we go again. Okay, every time, if we have to just keep throwing standards out, we could be doing this all day. We you know what standard, what chart, whatever they, what it is, it doesn't matter. Mike, let's throw all that out. It doesn't matter. The conversation, and I'm glad we got the conversation going. Is is this unhealthy lifestyle? something that they're throwing out to where we can kill ourselves. We're eating unhealthy. We're going out. We're spending money. You know, just it, it, it seems to me there is a narrative going out there to where we are uh, putting ourselves in a very, very bad state in regards to our health. And, and, and it's a sad thing. Like right now, I'm sure you heard it, but I think it was in Wisconsin where they, uh, the EBT cards, where they're saying no more of this other stuff. They only want certain specific things you can get. And people are outraged by that. But if you look at it, what they're saying is, well, you know, I'm, I'm not with them or whatever. What I'm saying is, well, yeah, if when you have a cart full of top ramen and you're feeding that to your kids, there's your sodium base that gets your high blood pressure and all this stuff. You know, we can throw all this stuff out. The conversation is, has anybody thought about are they trying to promote us to live an unhealthy lifestyle at 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 at, at five, four, 170 pounds, average woman? Sorry. You're, you're overweight, that's unhealthy. Well, I always say this. With Google being free, we should not be ignorant, okay? And to your question, are they promoting us to be unhealthy with the foods and different things? Hell to the, yes, they are. It has never been a secret. Oh, it's upside down. Never been a secret. These are uh, how to eat to live one and two by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, with which was written in uh, says 1972 is from what this one, one of them says a very long time ago, as long as I've been alive down there. And so are they trying to uh, promote an unhealthy lifestyle? Yes, but that's not a secret to us. We know that we live in food deserts predominantly in our neighborhoods. We know if we do have a grocery store, the stuff is probably not all that good for us. We know that they have you know, liquor stores in there with rotten fruit and milk and all. So we know all that stuff, right? And so since we are in an age of knowing, why do we continue to fall into what you would call propaganda? Why don't we say, okay, I know Top Ramen is not good for me. It's better off that I get some of the things that are mentioned in this book and other things, you know, on Google, whatever. So the other thing you said too, as far as your daughter, if you had a daughter, you know, are they promoting a uh, negative image to her? And y'all know what I always say, if anything, especially a damn mannequin is more influential over the life of your child than you, that it ain't the mannequin's problem, it's your problem. Because for one thing, you have a child, she probably does not go to the store and buy her own food. You probably do. And I would imagine if you are a parent worth your weight is one, you're not allowing your children to eat hot pocket top ramen, hot Cheetos and all of that. You are actually putting some good nutrients on their plate. So that's why I'm trying to figure out how the mannequin is promoting anything outside of you. Good, good point. Now you take the food, you take the clothing, you take the exercise in general, zero, you add that all together, it leads to an unhealthy lifestyle. If, if you think that being this size is normal in your mind, along with the diet that you have at home and the lack of exercise that, that you do do leads to an early death and a, and a very, very bad, bad outcome. So I look at that as a whole putting everything together. Yeah, even if that woman, uh, that woman, let's say she was real, never exercise. She ate fried chicken and french fries every day, all day. Th that ain't your business. That's her business. Absolutely. At the end of the day, we got one life to live, one body to take care of. And if that woman want to roll around and, and pig lard and chitlins and juice 
all day long it ain't your business because it ain't your woman and if you don't want her to be your woman then so be it but even with all i just said a woman doing all that there's somebody that will be snug as a bug in a rug in a bed with her they just will be so yeah, there, there's a lot of uh, homosexuals out there that need a place to stay. That, that's just how, how it's going to be. Because again, uh, this country, we pr the country itself, and, and it's a mental thing. We They promote a certain style, right? Like, okay, like uh, when I was in the DR, people kind of knew I was not from the East Coast because East Coast men are a little bit more bigger and burlier, like you were saying, kind of, you know, whatever the deal is with their little sweat rags that they have to have and stuff. Whereas I was like always active out there and people kept asking me, well, wh you know, where are you from? Whatever you're always trying to act here in California, Dimitri, as you know, we promote a lifestyle of, you know, active activity, 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 activity. So, you know, you want to look like the movie stars. You want to look like whatever, you know, whatever is supposed to be popular out here. So you, you can tell that nobody's talking about un under people's dresses and how they should look or whatever. That ain't what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm again. The total, the, the, the total thing of everything, and you put it together, is this what they're promoting? Because if I was a young person and somebody told me that this was normal and that's all I know is normal, I'm going to accept it. It's simple as that. And I, what I'm saying is we have to look and, and question these things sometimes. Sometimes. I want to I wanna touch upon something you said about only a homosexual wants those type of women. Can I ask you a question? Wait, yes, she did, brother. Yes, she did. But let me ask you a question. You, I met your wife, your ex-wife, beautiful sister, big, thick sister. And she was about the size of that mannequin, give or take. She has some pretty big drawers. Would you not say so? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Can I ask you a question? Was you a homosexual when you got with her? Homosexual means a man that ain't got nothing, ain't got a house. He just brewed up with a woman because she got shelter. Was you a homosexual? Now, as smart as you are, Demetra, and that did, and that definition that you just gave, did I not say that was my wife? Yes, you did. But I'm saying okay. you said then that. I, then I'm not a homosexual. By the I'm definition you just gave, the definition you just gave, that was my wife. Regardless, she was your wife, your boot thing, your boot No, no, thing, wait, wait. Friend. Your definition was what? A man that is just living off a woman, blah, blah, blah. That's what you said, right? Wait, wait. I'm not trying to be defensive. What I'm trying to say, by your definition, you should know better because that was my wife. That doesn't make me a homosexual. I was married to her. You didn't qualify that, brother. Then you know why I did that? Because you move in the goalposts again. Well, I didn't. By your definition that you just gave, a homosexual is a man that does this, 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 this. No, I was married to this woman. I was married to this woman. That doesn't make me a homosexual. I was married to her. Can I ask you another question? You muted yourself, brother. Can I ask you another question? Before you Go. got married to your wife, was she a big girl? And don't lie, because I've seen her. Yes, yes. Right, right there. Was you a homosexual then? No, because we weren't living together. And by your definition, that's what you just said. We, a, a man that is living off of a woman. We didn't live together. So no. You said a man that has no means. I have means. So I'm not a homosexual. So then your whole theory about homosexuals getting with fluffier women is just kind of shit, right? No, it's going by your definition. That's what, what the homosexuals do. Go Hold back up, and memorize it. I didn't Go bring back up and memorize it. I didn't bring up homosexuals. You did. But you gave the definition. So, so can I ask you what your definition of a homosexual is? What my definition of a homosexual is? It's a man that is living off of woman and her means and has no other place to go. Period. So in that same vein, you said homosexuals want to be with women like that mannequin. When you are a uh, homosexual, 
you take whatever you can get. So then your wife being an ex-wife being a fluffy or woman, did you take what you could get? I'm not a homosexual. By your definition, I'm not a homosexual. We're talking about men that we're going by your definition. I don't know why you why how you forgot that so quickly. Go back and look at the definition you gave for homosexual. Then why, per all the stuff you said about this mannequin, did you end up with your wife, the ex-wife is a beautiful woman. Why did you end up with her if she was unhealthy in a big girl wearing big drawers like this mannequin? So your question is, why did I end up with my wife? Well, again, my wife was skinny and she had cancer, which wait, 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 wait. She was, she was, she was. Then she got cancer and had a double mastectomy plus a hysterectomy, okay? I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. She refused to work out whatever, which made her unhealthy. Where, where my wife was at when you saw her and met her, she was an unhealthy woman, period, period. And, and, it met, and it messed with her mental because the doctors told her the same thing I was telling her. You got to work out and do what you got to do if you want the reconstructive surgery done or whatever it is you need to get done. And she, she would not put in the work. And it messed with her mental really, really bad. You moved the goalpost. No, I didn't. No, no I didn't. Because all that you said, I when I met your wife, she was not going through all of that. She wasn't. She was still a fluffy girl. Now, I know that back in the day. So you froze up because you're lying. You know, froze up. I know you probably can hear me, though. But back in the day, your wife, yes, she was a slender woman because she was in the military and all of that. But when you introduced her to me, it was almost like, and she's a beautiful woman, but the scenario I got, and Donovan froze up, maybe he'll come back. The scenario I got, y'all remember on the color purple when uh, Harpo brought Sophia to meet his daddy? That's kind of what it was. It's like, hey, this is my woman. You, she, you know, here she got something. That's what I, that's kind of what I envision. Yes, yeah, so uh, Donovan is having some connection issues, but you know, as uh, some people say in the comment section when we are live, that is probably the ancestors. Like, cut this off. <laughs> there you go. Can you hear me? You back? You yeah, have froze. Did you hear my scenario of when you first introduced me to your lady? I got the whole. No. Uh, Harpo introducing Sophia. <laughs> yeah. That's what it was. No. Right, right. No, I, I didn't get that. But 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 again, though, but again, when I when I when I met my 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 wife that you met, we met in high school. And again, when she got sick, it was a big, it was a big thing. But again, not not just dis, not just continuing that she was a big girl. I'll be the first to admit she was unhealthy. Because she wasn't where she wanted to be mentally in her mind, it played on her mental because of she being unhealthy. It did. It did. It did. But by your well, definition. Your wife, I'm going to take your word at it. But let me ask you this. Yeah. Good. The, the one chick that was parading around your house, but naked, mm -hmm. she wasn't skinny either. No, no, she wasn't. She wasn't. She wasn't. But it's, but it's, again, we're not talking about individual women. We're talking about is this nation and the powers that be promoting again, in our community, a lifestyle of being unhealthy. When you promote, do not work out. When you promote eating unhealthy, when you promote, um, this is a norm. 170 pounds is not normal. It's not. That's that's the issue. I'm, I ain't going to beat up on you no more, Donovan. I ain't going to beat up on you no more, but at the end of the day, I'm just going to go and put it out here. And I don't mean to argue with you for another 10. We can maybe do five on this because we want to go to the other one. At the end of the day, I just ascertain that you can't fat shame women in peace. Okay. I'm just saying. All right, so let's move on to the other scenario, okay? I'll be sure to tell your fans to watch this show. <laughs> Again, every time uh, the issue comes, as the feminist that you say you're not, you go to the feminist thing. You do. 
because it was not about women. It's about a healthy lifestyle. Because I again, there was no big fit, fat male ma uh, mannequins in, in the store, and I question that. I, I you know. I ain't gonna argue with you no more whether I'm a feminist or not. I, I just think it's very lazy for y'all to try to label women. I am not a feminist, but if you say everything, feminist, have you noticed that everything with you is a female, male? Have I, you noticed I, I, that? Nah, you brother, you, this was your time. Have you noticed that though? Way. Nah, I don't because I, let's let's okay. let's put it into con. Let's put the let's compartmentalize this topic. I didn't see this. You made this a topic. I said, okay, Donovan, I will go along with your narrative. I sat here for about five minutes and I listened to you form the narrative. It was not my narrative at all. And so I was just asking you questions. And so you said, I'm a feminist because I'm making it about male and female. You're the one that said that it was a fat woman mannequin for lack of better words at Target. You didn't see a man mannequin that was the equivalent, right? And so you called me a feminist. I tend to believe that you guys that call women feminists that are not, I think you're lazy thinkers. It's lazy, it's slovenly, it's lackadaisical to label, to name call me because you can't do the mental math and you can't back your argument up. And so you know what you do? You're the, the jerk in the sandbox that throws sand in people's eyes because you can't fight right number one i don't throw sand in people's eyes i kick sand in their eyes but anyway again i preface the whole thing was the propaganda narrative of an unhealthy lifestyle go back and watch this people if you're watching this go back and watch it and see who brings up feminist versus male or whatever the deal is moving on i'm gonna say if they watch this back and see who's more of a feminist it's probably gonna be you not me okay because Per y'all standards of feminism, I am more logical. I was able to slice and dice with razor blades and lemon juice the argument of are they promoting a health, uh, unhealthy standard with logic, and then you got emotional and called me no. a feminist at the end of this no. whole discussion. No, I didn't argue that. I said you don't think you're a feminist. You don't think you're a feminist. You don't think you are. You don't think you are. <laughs> So, you know, and, and that's fine, you know, but I'm telling you, if you go look at this, every time I or any male has a, has a, a statement or opinion, you seem to want to dice it up. And I don't know why you do that. Because wait, 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 and, and real, wait, wait and, and real quick. And if it was my narrative and you're supposed to go with it, you didn't do any of that. Your narrative was full of caca. OK, now I, we're having a discussion. And I don't, people don't always agree with me, but I don't kick sand in their eyes. I deal with it as best I can, right? And then let's keep it real. You and any of your homies, and I'll be more than welcome. I, you know what I'm going to start doing? I want to start debating you dudes who call me a feminist. Don't get mad because you can't do mental mathematics. Don't be mad because I'm not one of those women out there that y'all could bully. Don't be one mad, thing about right? feminists is no matter what the stats you put out off. there, you guys are not going to believe it. No matter what cutting we say, off. you're not going to believe it. Cutting me off is very emotional. Okay, I don't cut you off because y'all can't do the mental math. Don't call me names, don't call me a feminist because you cannot debunk. Listen, brother, that was your argument. I listened and I asked you questions in a, uh, a methodical manner that you to this moment have not been able to cut the mustard and do and show your work. You haven't been able to show your work. You said blurps of things and you have not been able to back them up because as they say, it ain't what you know is what you can prove. You said a whole lot of things that you could not show your work. Okay, I will agree with you if that makes you happy. But let me tell you guys that are listening, when you're dealing with feminists, no matter what stats you put out there, they won't believe them. No matter what you say, they won't believe them because it doesn't fit their narrative. The facts are the facts. A woman that is 5'4 and 170 pounds is unhealthy, period. But she says it's not. Okay. Then that makes your ex-wife and your ex-boo thing fat, unhealthy. I, did, I, I agreed with you. I said she was unhealthy. I told you she was unhealthy. See, 
Once again, you agree but with them and they said, still do it. But you also said that only homosexuals wanted them and that you weren't a homosexual. So you're because, arguing- because by your definition, a homosexual is a man that lives off a woman. I didn't I didn't do that. That's what you you agreed though. But no, I, I listened to what you were saying. I wouldn't be a homosexual because I don't live off women. Listen to what you're saying. Your definition, I don't fit that definition. I was married to my woman. <laughs> you can have that look all you want. <laughs> I love arguing with her because she knows she's wrong. Yeah, what kind of medicine <laughs> is you taking? Did you take it today? Did you take your medicine today? I did. I did. Am I talking to Donovan or your other personality? I did take my medicine. Your definition of a homosexual does not define me. It it didn't define anything that I am. I was married to my wife. That's not a homosexual. That's a married man and a married woman. But you wasn't married to that other one. But she was thick. She was a little overweight, like most women are nowadays in, in our community. But she was fine. Not once did I disagree with you. Everything that you're saying, I've agreed with you, and you're still arguing the point. Now I know damn well this is why doves cry. I know that for a fact. Now, well, if it, if Prince didn't know, tell him I know, okay? Because what you just did. Since it's probably illegal in 45 states. It got to be. Can't be. Can't be. I- I'm a civil servant. Can't be. I'm on the federal level. Ah, the Agent Orange is responsible for this. It got to be something. I'm not willing to just believe that you are this way normally. Where's the lie? When, where have I disagreed with you? Where have I disagreed with you? Other than your definition, your definition of a homosexual does not, that doesn't define me at all. Correct? Correct. You disagreed all the way up until recently. And all of a sudden you really agreed with what I said. And now you're saying that I'm arguing with you. Lord, have mercy. No, I'm just pointing out the discrepancies in some of the things that that you're saying, you said a homosexual was a man that lives off a woman. How does a married couple live off of each other? I'm married. You but you basically, I'm just going off what you said that that's who big women attract as homosexuals, and your wife and your ex boo thing that was running around the house naked was big women. Right, but they wait, wait. Homosexuals live off of women. Were they at my house or was I at their house? Listen, brother, I'm just telling you what you said and your argument. I'm just going by your definition. You said living off of women. I have a house. So how would I be a homosexual even by that? See, you you, you are doing. (laughs) She can't handle it. She can't handle it. You can't handle it. You break them down, fellas. They can't handle it. What you said, brother. I'm going to get real close. What you said was that was the type of dudes that big women attract was homosexuals. I asked you, were you one? No. You said no. Correct. And I, I was just, hey, I was going off of what you, I didn't, I didn't bring up homosexuals. You did. Right. But by your definition, I said no, because I don't meet the definition. I don't meet the definition. You gave the same definition though. No, I didn't. I'm married. I'm married. It's not the same definition. I'm married. A married person is not a hobo. You 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 gave the same definition. No, I didn't. All right, let's move on to the other topic. (laughs) I swear for Lord, baby Jesus, and all the twelve disciples. Okay, it's some you ain't quite right. But let me go and put this. Okay, so let's get on to it. I feel like I need to smoke something after all of that. Anyway, let's put this up here. This next topic, somebody actually sent this to me. I found it to be a very interesting scenario, and I'll put it up here like this. So I'm going to read this to you. It says, is a stepfather wrong in this? Let's talk about it. Scenario, my name is Stan. I am a 54-year-old man. My wife, Renee, and I have been married for 22 years. 
She had two beautiful daughters from her previous marriage. The girls were five and seven when we met. Their father, who is a doctor, abandoned them after he and Renee divorced. He remarried and took care of his new family. Meanwhile, I've always taken care of his girls as if they were my own. Renee has been a stay-at-home wife majority of our marriage, and I am a blue-collar worker. Now, I once asked her about seeking the doctor, which is the ex-husband for child support. Her reply was, we don't need him. We have you. I asked to adopt the girls, but Renee insisted that the doctor wouldn't agree to it. Uh, and says, regardless, I continue to take care of my family. I put both girls through college, brought both a car and was present at all of their school events. I am currently footing the bill for the eldest daughter's wedding and helping the youngest take care of her five-year-old. I am the only papa uh, the baby knows, okay? The doctor recently divorced his wife and has been trying to repair the relationship with his daughters. My daughter told me she wanted her biological dad to give her away and do the father-daughter dance. I was devastated. I suggested we both walk her down the aisle. Renee interfered and told me I'm just the stepdad and not to mess up her special day. I feel so broken. I have decided that I will not attend the wedding nor pay the remaining $10,000 balance after I already paid $12,000 on the wedding. My wife has called me petty and threatened to divorce me if I mess up the wedding. Uh, let's see here, because my thing is kind of blocked a little bit. Uh, it says, ah, I can't see it. Oops, hold on a second. He says, oh, however, I'm standing firm on my decision. Is he wrong? Donovan? No. Okay, so Donovan is saying he is not wrong. So again, as y'all heard, he took over, you know, uh, the parentalship uh, of his wife's two daughters from the age of five, seven, one's getting married, one has a child, he's taking care of both of them. The father, who sounds like he was a deadbeat, was a doctor, met, remarried, and now he wants to get back into the life of the daughters. And now the, he's going to be walking them one down the aisle, even though the stepfather was the most instrumental in their life. So he's abstaining, saying, I'm not going to continue paying and I won't. Uh, be there and the wife is basically saying well you're petty and if you uh, don't for lack of better words and you ruin her day I'm, uh, I'm going to divorce you and he's saying so be it now Donovan says he's not wrong I totally agree I don't think he's wrong I think um, there's so many things to this for one sounds like she's still tender for her ex-husband that basically abandoned her in any way shape and form uh, financially and everything else, her and the girls. And even when uh, he raised child support as an issue, because if he's a doctor, clearly he has it, right? I would imagine. She says, no, we were okay. You're taking care of us, you know, whatever. I know you can't adopt the girls because he won't have it, even though he kind of was absent for a good, you know, sounds like upwards of 20 plus years um, of the girls' lives. And so the mom... She just seems like she's interfered every way, shape, and form in holding their biological father responsible. And then he gets caught with the bill because I'm imagining, he, as he said, I see those girls as my own. Um, as a father, traditionally, the father of the bride, the family of the bride, they pay for the wedding. And so he's doing his fatherly duty and that he is paid for the wedding. Now the biological father wants to come in and soak up all the glory even though he has not been around. And so the, the I'm going to call him the real father because the real father is not the necessarily the one that creates you. It's the one that stays and um, and molds you and raises you, right? So uh, I'm standing with him on that. I think that he should abstain. And if the wife uh, is so bent on him uh, being seen as a second thought and being disregarded, if she is all right with that, then that's not his wife, even though they've been married all that time. I don't have a problem with anybody saying, I, if you won't respect me, I'm not going to disrespect me. If you feel so much for this man who abandoned his duties 
and that you would hold me responsible for not wanting to be treated like a wet dish rag that you would threaten to divorce me then i'm gonna miss you but i'm not going to have you force me because see that is the definition of a simp that if he was to say okay honey I know I'm gonna pay $22,000 for a wedding that I can't participate in because I don't wanna make you mad. You know what, in life, you are gonna have to piss some people off and you gotta ask yourself, is it, uh, do they deserve to be pissed off? And the wife deserves to be pissed off. And if you're pissed off by something I did and I'm standing my ground and I'm holding my dignity and respect intact and you're mad about that, well, sister, kiss where the sun don't shine. I am very shocked at what I just heard. Very shocked. Bye. You are going against the sisterhood. You know, y'all know, you know, rain, sleet, snow, shine, right, wrong, baby his. You know, I got the side, dude. Y'all are supposed to be on point with each other. The sisterhood is supposed to be strong. But you are standing up for what is right. And you're you're absolutely right that hey, it is what it is. Uh yeah, you're the mama, father's uh mama's baby, father's maybe. The, the, the other father was not there. The one that raises you and molds you is the father. And that's who should get the glory. Not this guy that shows up after the fact. I think uh, Shaquille O'Neal had a song called Biological Didn't Bother, talking about his father versus his uh, stepfather who raised him, Army Sergeant, by the way, uh, Harrison, Ar Ar Sergeant Harrison, that raised him. All of a sudden, Sha Shaq is going to the NBA. All of a sudden, his father pops up and is like, oh, that's my son. And that's this. He wants all the glory. That isn't how it works in the real world. Children will always remember those that have been influential in their lives. Because in most cases, it ain't about the money. It's not about the, the, the how big the wedding is or whatever. It's about the time you spent with that child. Because that at the end, that's all you're going to remember when you're sitting in that. And if you make it into, into that uh, senior's home and you're sitting in the corner looking out the window, all you're going to have, if you still got your faculties, what's left is your memories, if you're lucky. And a lot of my memories, I think of my uncles and the people that uh, stepped into you know, my life and when, when my father was gone and actually helped mold me to be the man that I am today. Uh, so uh, big kudos, like I said, he needs to kick that woman to the uh, curb. This is what we're talking about, please do. You got a lot of simp men out there that will just let these, uh, some of these women just you know, keep the lie going you know, and do all this other stuff. And then you're out of this money. This is another reason why it's, it's a really unfortunate that stepfathers don't get the respect that they used to get in, 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 in the community. And it's not just the black community, the community in general. So I, I'm with you on that one. I'm just shocked that she went against the, the sisterhood. Uh, I don't know why you're shocked because it's not even a sisterhood. It's common. No, I'm joking. You know, I'm I, joking. I know you are, but I just want to put that out there because some people might not think you're joking. It's about common sense. It's about decency. It's about who was there for me. See, that's the problem in a society that we have now is that we tend to kick those who are there for us in the behind. You know what I mean? People, I don't say people are there for you. People who are at your lowest, uh, they helped you whenever you needed, you know, or they were just completely there for you. Those are the type of people that get kicked in the behind. The people who do absolutely nothing and in fact, have made life hard for you. Those are the people that get the, the glory and, you know, the afterthoughts and all those things. So I don't even think it's necessarily a stepfather thing. I think it's a human, a, a human flaw uh, with some people that they would, you know, because I know I've been done wrong by people that wasn't my parents, you know, people I was there for, whatever. It kicked square in the behind, right in the tailbone, pow, you know, right, my people, you know what I'm saying? So I don't even know if it's a, necessarily, um, a stepfather uh, thing. I just think it's a, a horrible human thing that you would have a man that took care of you and you didn't work from what he was saying. You know, he's a blue collar worker. Doesn't mean he's not making any money, but I'm sure he worked hard for it. Took care of you and all the children. And you have the, the, the gall to tell him to stop being petty. I would even question if I was a stepfather, are y'all doing something I don't know about? Because why are you so tender for this man who left you high and dry? Why why are you going to bat for that man? That, that, I, would, I mean, that those are the things that will come 
into question. Why are you forsaking your loyalty to me over a man who didn't care what happened to you, left another man to raise his seeds and the man did it gratefully, but left you to do that. And here you are defending him. You should be the first one saying, oh, hell to the no Negro. You will not disrespect my man that did your job and you will not walk down the aisle. In fact, you better be happy if you get an invitation because that's what we own. And if my man don't want you up in that chapel, then your ass ain't going to be in that chapel. See, that's the kind of woman I am. I don't I don't have I'm not I don't I don't have a loyalty to a sisterhood of stupidity at all. See, any man that I've been with, they're not going to tell you that I've chosen somebody else over them. I don't care who it was. They're not going to tell you that about me. But unfortunately, see, this man, I think he knows his worth. If I was him, I'd have took it a step further. I'd have been like, I'm going to take this $10,000 that I was going to put on her wedding, and I'm going to take it to move out. I'm going to take it to move away from you as far as I can, and I'm going to take it to go get a good lawyer and divorce your raggedy behind. That's what I would have said. Matter of fact, I ain't going to wait for you to give me no directives about what you're going to do with me. I'm going to let you know what I'm going to do with you. And that's absolutely nothing from this point on. That's just me, though, because you ain't going to disrespect me. Would, would he be wrong if, if he pulled out his uh, financial portion of the wedding, do you think, in, in a situation like this? Or should he continue for the best betterment of the, in his relationship with that child? I, I Honestly, and I'm going to say this, if he if that child came out of his lower regions, even if she did come out, I think he would be within his rights to say, screw you too. I don't care if you my biological, you my stepchild, because you know what you're doing. You know that I've been there for you. Ain't seen your daddy nowhere in the last 20 plus years. All of a sudden he come around. I want to have a good relationship with you. Great. We can have a good relationship, but you're not going to disrespect my father because that man, the stepdaddy is her actual father. So he wouldn't be wrong if he wants his money back. But if I was him, I would take the petty to the next level and say, I paid y'all $12,000 never to ask me for nothing else no more. That's what I would do, okay? I, and to me, that $12,000 is good money spent because it revealed who y'all really are and how you really see me. That's just me. Ain't no sisterhood. It's common sense. I, I would agree with that. And if more women would just use common sense versus the sisterhood, I think this this miscommunication between men and women would uh, be a lot better be, be, be between the two. I want to bring up to Donovan that you just made it about gender because in that dichotomy, if you will, if you want to call it that, there is a man who knows he's being disrespectful to a man that took care of his responsibilities. And so where does he come in to the play as a man and say, you know what, baby, I know you probably want me to walk you down the aisle. However, that would be man, a not good. That would not be a good person to step in the shoes of the man who actually was a father to you. I haven't been around long enough to have earned that honor. And so as a man that's trying to do right by you now, I would rather have an invitation, if that's okay, sit there and watch the nuptials go forward because I did not have a hand in raising you to be a bride like your father did. And so while we can blame women, yes, that is a silly, horrible woman. The daughter is a silly, horrible woman, but they are involved with a silly man who, as y'all would like to say, he's supposed to be having some leadership qualities, but instead, sounds like he's going along with the nonsense. He could very easily say, oh no, I'm not gonna disrespect that man, but he probably has an ego problem and feels like, oh yeah, well they choosing me over, over the man that was there. And so without that man, they couldn't have that argument. Correct. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, let me just ask this question. Last question before before we get out of here. 
you have your father is still, you know, a great man. And you have a great stepfather. Have, have, uh, may he rest in peace. Great stepfather. If you were getting married uh, in a situation like that, would it make sense to ask, ask both of them to walk you down? Wouldn't that yeah. be a solution to the problem? Well, they, well for me, in, in your situation, in your yeah, situation, in my situation, because both of my fathers were instrumental in my life. So, yeah, it would make sense, you know, to say, uh, you know, maybe one walk me down the aisle and I have a father, da daughter dance with one of them. I would there be a compromise. Right. But I would not negate one for the other because, you know, they both are very instrumental in making me who I am. So, you know what I'm saying? So, but in that situation, it's like, no, there is no choice here because the other choice you're going to have is see if that man that left you so many years ago is willing to take you as his woman because you brought to not be mine. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm just saying that. And I, so I don't think, I don't have a problem with the man is doing, I don't think people, whether you're a man or a woman, I don't think you should allow yourself to be subjected to horrible behavior. I think, you know, when you know your worth, you are able to say, then I'll just be petty. But guess what? Y'all better get on the corner and have a car wash or dig in a doctor's pocket to pay for the rest of this wedding. Oh, y'all better go and have some, some of the sister so and so's and then make y'all some spaghetti dinners or whatever it is that y'all need because I'm not going to pay for it. I get you. I get you. Good, good point. And, and with that being said, this is my last day on the show because I know my words. I don't have to be treated this way. How dare you tell me? I got a mom and I got to come over here. I don't have to take none of this. You don't, have to, you don't own me. You don't, no, I'm just joking. About to say, because you know what us salty sisters say? What you won't do, another man will. <laughs> so anyway, y'all, I am busting a sweat up in this mug. It is hot today. I'm still too cheap to turn on my air conditioner. This ain't that. It yet. is cold here. At, uh, I think we got it. We're in the low. We're in the low 60s. Or no, we're in the 65, 66 range. We're in the high 80s today, and it just started to get warm up in here. Plus, I'm on all these lights. So yeah, um, this is partially why I can't wear makeup on my face as I'm recording, because I would be doing this all day long. You know, y'all know I ain't wipe my eyebrows though, because I wipe them off for the most part. So. Anyway, we love and appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much. I hope that you guys enjoyed this spirited uh, conversation. Uh, once again, you know, Donovan's going to go home hungry. I ate his lunch, you know, but at least, you know, something I like today. Anyway, of course, we have ways to donate and help the channel. We love and appreciate everybody. Love our members and everybody who are participating. Stay tuned for tomorrow. Wealth Wednesdays with Walter, where I'm sure it'll be more of a great conversation. Of course, we invite you all to come on and speak your piece. I put the link and all of that and so we are going to get out of here we love and appreciate y'all dearly see y'all later peace